One afternoon, I met a stranger who I was, and I never saw in my life, and he approached me and asked me if I could share my lunch with him. So I gave him my lunch, and he ate it, and he told me that, and you know, in the, six, in the next six months, all the family going to be killed. Then he went on to tell more story about that. I think sometime after that, one morning I went fishing with my uh, younger brother, and on my way back home, in my vision, I saw that man again. I, I felt like he tried to tell me something, but I could not really understand. On my way back home, I saw Khmer Rouge soldier that was sharp and nice and axe and sweet plate. Uh, at that moment, I became convinced. Whatever the stranger said six months earlier could become possible for my family that day. I got home, I saw they arrested my father. They brought his arm backward, and my father confronted him. He said, what is wrong with me? I perform all duty required by the government. And one of them said that today we will destroy you. The fear of being killed was so terrible in our lives. We could hardly stand still. You're so shaky, tremble. I wish something like heart attack or quick. Then they took her to the jungle. I think about 15 minutes prior to the killing in that time, they were, they were digging into graves, not, not yet ready for us. Yeah. And they tried to stop us. And uh, then uh, I walked to my father and uh, carrying him, my, my baby brother to him. I think he was absolutely emotionally choked up. He could hardly say a few words. But somehow he fought himself to say a few words. Uh, one of the words that he said was that, I love you. That was the first time that my father said that. It really meant a lot to my life. Mm. Then they took him to the grave and uh, he turned back and said that, goodbye, we come together, we die together as a family commitment. Then they make him kneel down and they bash him from behind. Uh, they chop at him, grab his leg, threw him to the pits. It was my turn then. I carry my baby brother to the grave and knelt down, left my baby brother beside me. Someone bash me from behind. When it came down to chop, everybody at the pits, somehow they missed me. But then I heard someone said, they probably pointed to me, they said, that one has not yet died. Somebody uh, jumped to the grave, tried to pull some limb away, and then they bust me one more time. I think the impact of hitting was so powerfully strong. Blood comes through my nose and my mouth, and I thought I'd finish. But then they tried to bury. Then I heard someone said, don't bury yet. There's some more enemies need to be finished in this place. Then they went to pick up uh, my mother, my sister, and other women who actually went to work in a farm early mornings. I think it took me about half an hour or so to get rid of dead bodies over me. And I looked for my father. I think he, he died already, but his eyes still open. I tried to close his eye and said something to him. And that moment, in my own conviction, to ease the pain was to die. There's no way I could move on beyond such tragedy yeah. In my life, how could you live? With I'm that? just too young to really understand. You know, I actually I lie on a dead bodies, waiting for them to come to finish me. When I'm lying there, somehow I saw the bird coming into the grave, sinking, and I was so disturbed by that. And I picked up a piece of threw at the birds, and for some reason the bird came back three times, and every time when the bird lands, I observed that the bird flew only one direction, which is eastward of the grave. If I were to look from my own perspective right now, I believe the Holy Spirit sent a bird actually to save my life. Yeah. I took the courage and climbed out the grave and followed the bird direction. You know, if I were to stay there three to five more minutes, I believe that Khmer Rouge soldier actually reached me on time. Yeah. There I saw they were dragging my mother, my sister, and other people approaching from the west side of the grave. And and the story, like you saw your mother be killed, the rest of your family, 13 family members and all, the story of how you survived after that is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but just for sake of time right now, yeah. uh, Rex, I wanna move on to that forgiveness piece because you suffered, as who wouldn't, from post-traumatic stress disorder for many years, not knowing what it was. You were just a child when you watched all this happen. Yes, yes. How in the world did you ever begin recovery? And I know forgiveness was a big piece of that, which is inconceivable to probably everyone watching. I think uh, to me, it's a long journey of learning how to forgive. And uh, it can be very easy to say, I forgive you from a long distance, but in reality, it's a long struggle. To me, learning to forgive is to set myself free. 
Yeah. Uh, to, to let go all emotional and negative emotion, especially bitterness, hurt, and anger, and disappointment, all kind of that. But it's not easy. And I actually went to, uh, to meet my family killer in Cambodia and uh, to, to, to forgive them. I mean, yeah. it, it is a long, uh, difficult journey. And uh, to look through the man's eyes, to say just a few words, I forgive you. That is impossible in my own human instinct. And that's footage of the three men that are surviving that killed your family yeah, that I, you I, went I, to meet. I could never believe that I could do that. I believe that only the power, the grace of God in my life that helped me to be able to uh, say, I forgive you. You know what? After that, I gave him a hug. That was a bit uncultured for the Cameroon people hugging each other, especially men and men. And so when I hugged him, I could feel that his, uh, his body almost like a vibration, so tremor, so shaky. And uh, I told him that 28 years ago, when you took me to, f to the jungle, this is how I feel. But today I come back as ambassador of Jesus Christ to set you free. And uh, I could tell that uh, the first man did not say anything, but the second man, the man who killed my, uh, my mother, I went to give him a Campbell scarf as a symbol of my forgiveness for him. And then I said that uh, I come to forgive you. And then he asked me, why, why your God is so good that have you to forgive? You know what? I was given an order to kill your family. If I did not do it, it would kill me. But no matter what, I was wrong. And then he said that, will you forgive me? Mm. I just broke down when I heard that. Actually, I longed to hear that word almost 30 years in my life. And uh, when I heard that, I was weeping, crying. I cried in a sense that I actually set myself free. And that was the most difficult mission in my life, of learning to forgive my family. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. Most of us can't forgive the smallest things, and you had to forgive that huge thing. Just in obedience to your faith and the power of God is amazing. If somebody is trying to forgive right now and they're struggling, what is the best piece of advice you could give them? I think that one thing they need to look at their own brokenness. And us. There's no way they could uh, live their life with all kinds of hurt and bitterness and brokenness and pain or kind of that. Forgiveness is an act of letting go of the hurt and pain and forgiveness in individual life. And you hold on to that, your body is not built to carry that kind of negative emotion. The only way is to let it go. Like Jesus said, if the Son set you free, you shall be free indeed. So forgiveness is an act of liberating yourself from all kind of negative emotion. Set yourself free and by the grace of God, you're willing to take that road, He will lead, set you free.